If you're a big Star Citizen player, you probably have a good idea of the lengths to which people will go to in order to chase LTI on their packages, the holy grail of lifetime insurance that may protect your real world purchase in the game world. But of course, the risk of the insurance model is that potentially means that real world purchases might end up in in-game situations in which they're not protected. I'm Varister, and this video will explore why that's potentially a ticking time bomb for Star Citizen. The developers have been very quiet on the issue of insurance, at least in recent times. Go back to 2012 and there's an article on the Star Citizen website all about insurance, how it'll work and how it'll protect original backers with lifetime insurance. The article talks about how all ships would have in-game insurance and those who backed first would have a little perk of lifetime insurance for their ship, which was mostly a minor convenience in not having to pay those in-game costs. The article goes on to say that insurance policies sold with ships will begin to have a timer attached and that uninsured ships lost in-game would need to be repurchased with in-game currency. In other words, ships bought with real money that are destroyed without a game insurance in place would be lost. Now, this is where things get tricky, because clearly the idea of players spending hundreds of dollars on virtual spaceships that could potentially be destroyed in-game, and if that happened with those ships in an uninsured state, that cash lost permanently, is a frightening prospect. That's why many players chase packages with LTI or lifetime insurance to know that the money they spend out of game is to some extent protected for as long as they play in-game. Whilst the idea of having a cost to insure your ship in-game to cover the risk of loss does make sense from a gameplay perspective, the risk of losing your real money purchase makes less sense. And whilst none of this matters in-game yet, whilst our citizen is still in alpha testing, this issue that the developers have been so silent on for some time is a ticking time bomb. The moment that somebody loses their $900 space yacht permanently because they didn't buy insurance in-game, well, you can just imagine how the news outlets would jump on that. The other elephant in the room is that of insurance inflation. Back in 2012, the original backers all got lifetime insurance on ships purchased to that point, but new packages from then came with a set insurance term on them, starting at about two months of in-game insurance coverage. Since that point, the amount of insurance included in different bundles has increased during strategic events through the years, like the anniversary intergalactic aerospace in November, and most recently, that's upwards of 10 years attached. So, if you bought the same ship in 2012, you might have two months attached, versus today, it might be 10 years. Whilst often the price of game packages has gone up in that time, clearly the difference in the level of in-game protection for that is notable. Another unknown within this all is the future of Star Citizen's funding model. Clearly, whilst in development, a key pillar of that game funding is driven by ship sales, with many players often buying multiple ships. And to some extent, that's supported by the inflation of insurance offerings, with players often choosing to change ship, play the CCU game, or even purchase with riskier person-to-person -person sellers in order to chase higher insurance protections or the lifetime insurance. But once development of the game finishes, there will need to be some consideration to the funding model, whether that would be through further ship sales, cosmetics, in-game currency, Squadron 42 campaign sales, or even more scarily for many, the dreaded monthly subscription model. Perhaps ship insurance will play some role in that future funding model. Regardless, the unknown quantity of what will happen with in-game insurance creates a bit of a burning platform, both for players and for the game itself. Perhaps it is for this reason that the Star Citizen team have been intentionally quiet on the subject of in-game insurance for out-of-game purchases. Perhaps the historic sales over the last 12 years have burrowed so far down the rabbit hole that players are already committed to purchases based on insurance, but equally, 
It's quite a scary prospect for a game studio to openly publicise that hundreds of dollars of player purchases could be at risk within months of the game launch. Of course, if all players fully understand their purchases and decisions, if all players fully understand that insurance means there's a risk of loss for their purchases in-game, but decide to purchase anyway, that's a respectable decision made by the individual. But it's possible that what players expect may be different, based on their own interpretation of their spend. For example, personally, I'd be pretty comfortable with having 6 months insurance on a $50 pledge, then losing the ship after 6 months, as frankly, that's kind of what I'd pay for a subscription for many other MMOs. But 6 months insurance on a $600 package becomes a very expensive subscription, so I'd personally be less comfortable with that. You might argue that the onus is on me as the consumer to fully investigate my purchase, but given that many Star Citizen ships are sold before they're even available to play in-game, never mind about clear, recent and relevant communication of what insurance actually means, at least some responsibility should sit with the seller. Indeed, many jurisdictions might find in favour of the consumer in such instances. Ultimately, there may be things that can be done by the developers in-game to encourage players to pay for their insurance with UEC. Big warning messages, very clear, hey, you're in an uninsured situation in the ship right now in big red text all over the screen, to make it clear that a risky situation is developing and offer an easy solution. Even with that though, you just know there would be players who would ignore it. With all of that, one thing seems likely, that as the mythical Star Citizen release date edges closer to tangibility, this issue may well need to be addressed, either through affirming the statements made back in 2012 and risking media fallout, or by a deviation from that and risking player fallout. Either way, much as with real-life insurance, the end result is likely to leave a bitter taste for somebody. But maybe I'm all wrong, and you think that in-game insurance will have a happy ending. You can let me know if you agree or not in the video comments. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, but would like YouTube to show you more videos like this, you might want to press that button. And if you thought this video was interesting or thought-provoking, then pressing the like button will give me the prompt to make more videos like this in future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.